Are you tired of feeling like a pawn in someone else's game? Do you value personal freedom and safeguarding your rights? You're not alone. As concerned citizens, we must understand the power dynamics at play especially with agencies like FEMA. Let's explore how to protect our liberties and stay informed. All right, let's talk a bit about FEMA. It's an agency designed to assist during crises, but concerns about its power are rising. People worry about three main issues, seizure of supplies, forced relocation, and martial law. First, there's fear that the government could seize essential items like food or medicine similar to past shortages. The idea of the government controlling our supplies is unsettling. Next is the possibility of forced relocation. The government has the power to move people, which has happened before, raising concerns about control and freedom. Finally, martial law, where the military takes over civilian government, is a rare but possible scenario that many find alarming. While FEMA isn't all-powerful and lacks the resources for large-scale operations, these concerns are valid. Understanding our rights, like those protected by the Fourth Amendment, and building strong, supportive communities are essential. State sovereignty also plays a key role. States with laws protecting individual rights, often called sanctuary states, offer some protection from federal overreach. It's important to research and understand the laws of different states to find a place that aligns with your values, offering a sense of security and preparedness. When I first started thinking about where to live to ensure the most freedom and minimal government interference, Oklahoma immediately came to mind. Oklahoma's strategic advantage as a state that minimizes federal involvement is bolstered by its unique geographical landscape. Nestled in the heartland of America, Oklahoma's eastern regions possess a distinct combination of features that make it an attractive destination for those seeking to evade the scrutiny of large-scale federal operations. One of the most noteworthy aspects of this region is its relatively low population density. This characteristic means that federal emergency management agencies, such as FEMA, often prioritize urban areas with higher population density and greater strategic importance, leaving rural regions like eastern Oklahoma with comparatively less attention and oversight. I remember taking a road trip through the eastern part of Oklahoma, and the vast open spaces gave me a sense of freedom and independence. There's something incredibly reassuring about knowing that you're in a place where the hustle and bustle of urban life is far away, and where federal eyes are less likely to be focused. Oklahoma's strong tradition of championing state sovereignty and individual freedoms adds to its appeal. The state's political climate is marked by a deep-rooted resistance to excessive federal control, reflected in its legislative and executive actions. This stance aligns with the beliefs of those who fear government overreach and seek a sense of security in the face of potential crises or martial law scenarios. Maintaining a posture of state sovereignty and resisting federal encroachment, Oklahoma offers a safe haven for individuals who value minimal government interference in their lives. I've met many Oklahomans who take pride in their state's independence and commitment to personal freedoms. Their stories and experiences reinforce my belief in Oklahoma as a place where one can truly live freely. The state's rural character and dispersed population distribution contribute to a sense of isolation and self-reliance that is highly prized by those wishing to stay off the grid. The lack of dense urban and critical infrastructure means that federal emergency management efforts may be less focused on these regions, allowing individuals to potentially evade detection and maintain a degree of autonomy. I once visited a small town in Oklahoma where the community spirit was incredibly strong. People knew their neighbors, helped each other out, and had a sense of self-reliance that is rare in larger cities. This sense of community and the ability to live independently are key reasons why Oklahoma is such an attractive option for preppers. Oklahoma's unique geographical location and abundant natural resources present distinct advantages. Situated in the heart of the Great Plains region, the state's diverse landscape encompasses sprawling prairies, rolling hills, and the picturesque Wichita and Wichita mountain ranges. This strategic position, coupled with a temperate continental climate, provides Oklahoma with a wealth of natural resources, including vast reserves of oil and natural gas, fertile agricultural lands, and a variety of mineral deposits. 
While the state is indeed prone to natural disasters such as tornadoes, which can wreak havoc across the region, Oklahoma's community-driven response and local crisis management often demonstrate the effectiveness of a decentralized approach to emergencies. During these critical situations, the state's well-coordinated network of local emergency management agencies, volunteer organizations, and community-based initiatives have consistently proven their ability to respond swiftly and efficiently, often outperforming the efforts of larger federal agencies. I've seen firsthand how Oklahomans come together in times of crisis. When a tornado hit a small town I was visiting, the community's response was nothing short of amazing. Volunteers, local authorities, and neighbors all worked together seamlessly, showcasing the strength and resilience of a decentralized approach to emergency management. The strategic advantages offered by Oklahoma's unique geographical landscape and political climate become increasingly attractive to those who prioritize personal freedoms and the minimization of federal involvement in their lives. The state's ability to provide a sense of security and seclusion while upholding the principles of state sovereignty and individual liberty makes it a compelling choice for those seeking to navigate the complexities of emergency situations or martial law conditions. Furthermore, the strong sense of community and self-reliance found throughout Oklahoma enhances its appeal. In times of uncertainty or potential upheaval, Knowing that you are part of a community that values independence and mutual support can provide immense peace of mind. When it comes to emergency preparedness and self-sufficiency, Ohio stands out as one of the top-ranked states for preppers. Its abundance of natural resources and relatively low-key urban landscape make it an ideal location for those looking to stay off the radar and avoid reliance on external support systems like FEMA. I remember the first time I drove through Ohio. I was on a cross-country trip, and the vast, open spaces and lush green landscapes caught my eye. It wasn't just the beauty of the state that struck me, but also the sense of calm and self-sufficiency that seemed to permeate the air. This was a place where one could truly live independently, and it sparked my interest in learning more about how Ohio could be a haven for preppers. Ohio's rural character fosters a sense of self-reliance and independence, qualities prized by those seeking to live off the grid. In small towns, the strong community spirit is palpable. Residents help each other out and value their independence, reinforcing Ohio as a top choice for those wanting to live freely. The state's geography and natural resources are also significant draws. Ohio's diverse landscape including prairies, hills, and mountain ranges, provides a wealth of natural resources like oil, natural gas, and fertile agricultural land. While the state is prone to natural disasters like tornadoes, the community-driven response often outshines federal efforts. I witnessed this firsthand when a tornado hit a town I was visiting. Locals responded quickly and efficiently, showcasing the strength of a decentralized emergency management system. Ohio's blend of geographical advantages, political climate, and strong community ties makes it an attractive option for those prioritizing personal freedom and minimal federal interference. The state's commitment to state sovereignty and individual liberty, coupled with its strong community support and self-reliance, offers peace of mind in uncertain times. When I first visited Alaska, I was struck by its immense untamed beauty. The towering mountains, pristine glaciers, and vast wilderness seemed almost surreal. It's no wonder that this state, with its expansive and rugged landscape, offers both significant challenges and remarkable opportunities for those seeking a self-sufficient, off-grid lifestyle. Alaska is the largest state in the U.S., covering around 663,300 square miles. Yet it's sparsely populated with just over 731,000 residents. This averages out to roughly one person per square mile, emphasizing its isolation and untamed nature. I remember standing on a ridge, looking out over miles and miles of untouched wilderness, feeling a profound sense of solitude and freedom. This isolation is both a challenge and a blessing, providing a unique environment for self-reliance. Alaska's economy has traditionally relied heavily on oil and gas extraction, which once accounted for up to 85% of the state budget. However, 
The drop in oil prices has pushed Alaska to diversify its economy, incorporating fishing, seafood processing, tourism, and mining. The abundance of natural resources like timber, minerals, and marine life offers both opportunities and challenges for residents. I once spoke with a local fisherman who shared how the bounty of the sea has sustained his family for generations, even as they've had to adapt to economic shifts. Alaska's harsh weather conditions, including long, frigid winters and short, cool summers, require a high degree of adaptability and resilience. The first winter I spent in Alaska was an eye-opener. The extreme cold, powerful storms, and unpredictable weather patterns can disrupt daily life, making it necessary to be well-prepared and self-reliant. Many communities are accessible only by air or sea, adding another layer of complexity. Yet the people I've met in these remote areas are some of the most resourceful and resilient individuals I've ever known. Alaska's unique landscape and legal framework present distinct advantages for those seeking a self-sufficient, off-grid lifestyle. The state's permissive laws regarding land use, hunting, and resource extraction offer opportunities to live in harmony with the land. I visited a homestead where the family had built their own sustainable shelter, harnessing solar and wind power, and growing their own food. They shared how Alaska's minimal government oversight allowed them to create a life of greater independence and self-reliance. The people of Alaska are a resilient and resourceful bunch, accustomed to the challenges of living in such a remote and unforgiving environment. They have developed a deep appreciation for the natural world, recognizing the importance of sustainable practices and the delicate balance between human activity and the preservation of the land. This ethos has given rise to a thriving community of homesteaders, off-grid enthusiasts, and outdoor adventurers who have chosen to make Alaska their home. The feasibility of sustaining a self-reliant community, especially in remote areas, is a topic of growing interest. In Alaska, this possibility takes on an alluring, almost mythical quality. Those who possess the fortitude, resourcefulness, and determination to adapt to the physical demands of this environment can find a captivating opportunity to establish a self-sufficient, off-the-grid lifestyle. I recall a couple who moved to Alaska from the lower 48 states. They spoke passionately about the freedom and autonomy they found in their new life, far removed from the trappings of conventional society. Settlers in remote Alaskan outposts must be skilled in a wide range of practical survival techniques from hunting and foraging to building sustainable shelter and generating their own power. They must also possess a resilient spirit, able to withstand the extremes of the climate and the isolation that comes with living far from the comforts of modern life. Yet, for those who embrace this challenge, the rewards can be profound. They cultivate a deep connection to the natural world and a sense of independence from mainstream society. Tennessee often gets overshadowed by the bustling East Coast, but it holds a unique allure for those seeking a balance between tranquility and preparedness. I first realized this during a visit to Nashville, where the blend of urban life and natural beauty was striking. For individuals interested in self-reliance and emergency readiness, Tennessee's moderate population density and smaller, major cities make it an attractive destination. Unlike the giants of New York City and Chicago, Tennessee's cities like Nashville, Memphis, and Knoxville are less likely to become central points in national emergency operations. This can be a significant advantage during times of crisis. I remember walking through downtown Nashville and noticing how, even at its busiest, the city felt more manageable and less overwhelming than larger metropolitan areas. Geographically, Tennessee offers a diverse landscape that supports self-sufficiency. The state is rich in natural resources, including vast forests, fertile agricultural land, and plentiful water sources from its rivers and lakes. All these are essential for long-term sustainability and off-grid living. During a hike in the Great Smoky Mountains, I was struck by the abundance of foraging opportunities and the potential for homesteading. Financially, Tennessee's lack of a state income tax is particularly appealing to those seeking to maximize their financial resources. 
The state's lower cost of living compared to the national average makes it more accessible for purchasing property and investing in self-sustaining infrastructure like solar panels, wind turbines, and water ration systems. I met a couple who had moved from a high-tax state to Tennessee and were thrilled with the financial freedom they found. Tennessee's climate is a critical factor for survivalists and preppers. The state's four distinct seasons, with moderate temperatures and adequate precipitation, allow for year-round agricultural activities. This is crucial for food self-sufficiency. I visited a small farm where the owners were growing a wide variety of crops and raising livestock reducing their dependency on external food sources. Tennessee's geographical location, situated between the Appalachian Mountains and the Mississippi River, provides a strategic advantage in the event of regional or national emergencies. The state's transportation infrastructure, including highways, railways, and waterways, can facilitate the movement of essential supplies and resources, making it a potential hub for emergency response and logistics. The relatively low population density and smaller urban centers make Tennessee an attractive destination for those seeking to establish self-sufficient communities or safe havens in times of crisis. I visited a community where residents shared their experiences of working together to create a sustainable and resilient lifestyle. The sense of camaraderie and mutual support was inspiring. The first time I set foot in the Rocky Mountains, I was completely captivated. The majestic peaks, the endless forests, and the sheer vastness of the landscape left me in awe. This region, stretching across Colorado, Utah, Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming, offers a unique blend of natural beauty and opportunities for self-reliance. As an adventurer and someone passionate about independence, the Rockies felt like a place where one could truly live a life of rugged self-sufficiency. The Rocky Mountains have long drawn explorers, adventurers, and those seeking a life of independence. The region's rugged terrain and relatively sparse population density foster a strong sense of community and self-sufficiency. For instance, Colorado, renowned for its soaring peaks and breathtaking vistas, has a population density of only around 55 people per square mile. This is a stark contrast to the densely populated urban centers on the coasts. States like Montana and Wyoming, also part of the Rocky Mountain Range, are among the least densely populated in the country, with approximately seven and six people per square mile respectively. This low population density means that in times of emergency or disaster, communities within these regions may need to rely heavily on their local resources and support systems. I remember visiting a small town in Wyoming where the community spirit was incredibly strong. Everyone knew each other and worked together to solve problems and support one another. The challenging geographical features of the region can present logistical challenges for government agencies like the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, to manage and provide support during widespread crises. However, this lack of government intervention can be advantageous for those who value independence and self-reliance. In the Rockies, individuals and communities are often compelled to develop their own solutions to challenges, relying on their resourcefulness and resilience. I met a family in Idaho who had built their own off-grid home, complete with solar panels and a rainwater collection system. Their ingenuity and determination were truly inspiring. The relative lack of government presence in the Rocky Mountain states also provide a sense of freedom and autonomy for residents. This allows them to make decisions and take actions that align with their personal beliefs and values without excessive bureaucratic oversight. This freedom to shape one's own destiny is especially appealing to those who prioritize personal liberty. During my travels, I encountered many individuals who cherished this autonomy and had chosen to live in the Rockies specifically for this reason. However, this independence and self-reliance come with their own set of challenges particularly in times of crisis or disaster. The limited government presence and resources mean that communities in these regions have to shoulder a greater responsibility for their own well-being. This includes providing essential services such as emergency response, health care, and infrastructure maintenance. 
I recall a conversation with a local firefighter in Montana who explained how the community had to come together to fund and maintain their fire station, highlighting the importance of cooperation and mutual support. Despite these challenges, the Rocky Mountain states continue to attract individuals and families drawn to the allure of rugged independence and self-reliance. The resilience and resourcefulness of the people who call the Rockies home are a testament to the enduring human spirit. If you want to be prepared for any trouble that comes your way, click the video on screen now to learn about the 14 foods the Red Cross urges you to immediately stockpile.